Zen Karn. Hey guys, it's Sankan again here, bringing you another video, and in this video, we're going to look at combination locks. So recently, in one of JL2579's videos, he made an easy key set combination lock. And, you know, I looked at his video, and I was like, that's, it, it is amazing, I'm not gonna lie, it is amazing, it's an amazing creation. Um, but, it might be a bit overcomplicated. Um, that was what I thought, anyway. You might have your own opinions, and in all honesty, this might look, the thing that I'm going to show you today, is probably also going to look like a complete mess of redstone. But, I thought, you know, I might as well give you guys the choice. Um, it does have a couple of down points, which is that you can't easily set the combination key. You actually have to hardwire it. So, I mean, you have... You can easily set it, but you need to go into the redstone contraption itself and then uh, reconfigure some repeaters and such. But apart from that, it's completely fine. So we're going to start off this video with this. Now, this is something that I did a video on a very, very, very long time ago. And it's, uh, it's a string of SR latches. Um, and also, they've got a NAND feature on them as well. So, basically, only if, if I just try and trigger one of these, say, like, one of these middle ones, um, basically, the NAND feature is over here, which basically means that only when this SR latch is turned on, or when this um, repeater, um, a repeater, this piston is, like, uh, drawn backwards, will this piston actually completely lose power, right? So, basically, we can trigger these two as long as we like. Oh, God. <laughs> um, that was not meant to happen. Yeah, but we can trigger these two pistons as much as we like, but only when this piston is activated will be we be able to uh, activate this one. And once again, we can activate this piston however many times we like, but we have to activate this one before we can activate this one and turn on the output. And then the reset to this is actually super simple. All we really need to do is power this piston right here and it will just do a chain reaction all the way through the chain and then it switches off. So that is <coughs> pretty much the combination lock, but we just need to do a bit of wiring and such to make it a bit more user friendly. So that's where we have this. Now, if I just take away all of these blocks, because they're not actually really required, it's just some. Um, it just gives us some indication of uh, when the code is correct. So this is actually incredibly simple. We just have the core, which is that part over there, which is here, and we have to do it in reverse. Um, so, let me just explain. If you, um, yeah, so, say your code is 1 to 1, right? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have the, the one line to go, like, on this piston, then off of that piston, and then onto this piston. And then your two line goes onto this piston, um, just, yeah, just onto this piston. <coughs> and then your one line will trigger again, which is this piston, and then this piston, right? Um, but, uh, you know, it doesn't matter that it triggers this piston again, because the output is already on, right? Um, <coughs> pardon me. So, we have this. So, we literally, we have our lines here connected to the pistons uh, that we need to trigger. And once again, you can see we're doing it in reverse. We're activating this line four. So I've got the code set currently to one, two, one. And so we have this repeater here that goes into this line first. And we've got this on a monostable circuit as well. So it turns off afterwards. And then we got another one uh, into here. This, you see there's no repeater. Um, or this repeater isn't here, should I say. So, you know, it's just 
it just goes into here. And um, so it doesn't go into this line. And then in this one, it goes through and into here. And you can see the purple line that goes straight into this line here, right? So it's actually pretty simple to change the code. Um, literally what it is, is say instead of, well, firstly, I guess I should show you um, one, two, one in action. Um, also, this is no longer required because I did some modifications earlier. Uh, so let's just have a look at one, two, one. So we type in one. We type in two, and you can see that SR latch over there has triggered. We trigger one again, and then we get an output for a short while, and then it resets. And now let's just do, I don't know, two, two, one, right? So two, two, one. Now you can see this bit over here, this SR latch triggered. Now the way I sort of overcame that is I have a reset line over here. So this is just basically a counter that counts up to three. So like one, uh, then this one triggers, that's two, this one triggers, that's three, right? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the reset there. So if you just come up to this and then you go like one, two, three, then nothing will happen. Whereas if you type in the right code, then you get an output. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change the code from 121 um, to, let's say, 124. Okay, so we have our one line here. We activate this one here, so this is actually the final digit. So it's it's the first digit over here, the second digit over here, <coughs> and then the final digit over here. So literally we, what we need to do is we just need to replace that with redstone dust, come over to the number four line, and whack that repeater right there just on two. It will do, and now, <coughs> we can try out the thing. So put our reset button in. Uh, the reset button is useful if you're going to, um, well, yeah, I guess just reset the system. And no surprises there, right? Um, so yeah, uh, that's that. And um, yeah, so let's do the right code now. So now it should be one, two, four. So we activate one, we can see that piston RS null latch over there triggering. We click two. We can see this one triggering. If we try one now, let's just try one. Nothing will happen, and the whole thing res will reset. So let's try one, two, four now. We do one. We input in two. We input in four, and you see we got the signal there coming through. So <coughs> there you go. It works. Um, now, of course. If someone came up to this and just put in two digits, let's say one and three, right, and then left it, and then went away, and then uh, came back. Currently, a problem with this design is it doesn't actually reset this uh, chain of hoppers. So if you came along now and say you tried to put in one to one, you like put in one, and then it resets, and then you do two and then nothing happens, you do four again, nothing happens, and you're like, why the hell isn't this working, right? So, a good way of doing, like, solving that issue is whenever a um, pulse comes through here, we can actually have a little indicator light on the side, not like that, uh, or even a pulse coming through here, so just get a lamp or something, like that so when we put in our thing we know oh it's reset so someone must have tried to get into our base or whatever uh, another way of doing it would be hooking up this reset line to rapidly trigger this line right here so let's say it triggers it three times or something uh, just to filter through the code 
Now, a little bit of other stuff. You can expand this like as long as you want. So if you want, you can have a like a string of 100 of these lines if you wanted to. Like that would be a bit like uh, overprotective, um, especially since they can just mine through the wall anyway. Um, but yeah, or you can do I don't know. Um, you can have a f four or five pin code just by lengthening this and also lengthening this. Just You'll just have two more cells of this along in this direction. And well, that's pretty much it. So I guess the last thing that I need to really s show is um, now that you've, I guess, understood how most of it works, is I just need to show you how to build this. Was this the most complicated bit? And it's the core of the whole machine. Um, oh, and if I hadn't explained before, this reset line um, uh, from the counter comes down and through into this reset line, and it comes along, and it just powers this piston right at the end here, and powering this piston will just make a ricocheting effect. So let's just have a look at how to make this. The best way to start is to do this and this, put two torches down put pistons on top of these blocks and there is your SR latch so if I just get a redstone block here and I just trigger this you see we got an SR latch okay so this is S our SR latch now we just need to know sort of which direction we want to sort of go in um, so let's go in this direction. You literally just put a torch next to this torch right here um, on the side of this block. So it's it goes two out. So we want another one after that. We just do this. Another one after that. We just do this. And we can put our torches along like this. Now we put our blocks on top of this with uh, blocks on in front of those. And now we want our pistons here to go in the opposite direction. So we place it on that block, on that block, and that block. Uh, put blocks on the all of these pistons as well. Like so. Trigger this like this. And then right at the very end, to get your output, you just do exactly the same thing, two blocks apart. Put a torch on there and then a repeater like that and then you want to invert that signal so with a torch here or a torch here doesn't really matter and there you really have it so here's your combination lock you know try and activate this uh, and the whole thing resets uh, that's uh, a bit weird what the hell happened there uh, wait a sec aha no yes of course so make sure that all of these pistons are extended first and now this is your combination lock. So you know, you can activate this one here, but nothing will happen. Activate this one here, nothing will happen. And stuff will only start happening if you activate this one, then what the heck is going on? Oh my God, I was completely stupid. Sorry guys, underneath all of these pistons, we need to place blocks like this, and we need torches along like this as well. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> whoops. So, again, we're going to extend all of these pistons. And once again, if we extend this one, nothing will happen. Extend this one, nothing will happen. Extend this one, only this cell should like retract like this. And then you activate the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and then you finally get an output here. And that's really it, guys. So, that is uh, pretty simple really um, it's by far less complicated and less redstone intensive than JL's design um, it might be a tiny bit larger I don't really know um, also it doesn't have some of the features that his design has so um, yeah basically I mean the same things that were issues in his design are pretty much the same issues that you get in this design you know if someone walks away um, without like 
uh, showing you the sort of um, the code, if that makes sense. So, you know, someone goes away and uh, you know just tries to put in like a code like one three, and then walks away. Then <coughs> you can come back and you know start putting in your code, and it'll be completely different. So that's why we need this um, indicator light here, really. And um, and yeah, you can just take the signal from here, and there you go. So really, it's it's pretty simple in the in the case of like how to make it. It has one downside that you know the to actually implement the code, you need to go into the wiring itself and place down repeaters where you want lines to be triggered and such. But in all honesty, I don't think that's like a massive deal. Like you might think it's a massive deal. I don't know. Like, <coughs> I'm just used to redstoning like this, so, you know, if it works for me, it, it sh I guess, in my opinion, it should work for you guys. Um, I just want to try something else, finally, before um, we do this. I want to try and make the code 111. Um, so, again, I'm going to have two repeaters here. I think I'll, I'm going to need another two here and also another two here as well um, for this to work I think yeah so just like that one 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 and that's uh, so ideally you actually want a repeater here on every one of these lines so like this And then, you know, if you actually want to implement this character here, you just replace the re uh, the redstone here with a repeater um, and make sure that no other lines are like that. So, essentially, this would be your completely uncoded line. And then say we want the code 1, 2, 3. Well, we start with the 3 over here then we go to the two so we do it in reverse and then we go to the one and there you go that's your code one two three so let's just try that once again one two three we get this output and the whole thing resets and then if someone you know goes long does one 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 then the output re will reset but we don't get any signal Anyway guys, uh, that's it for this video, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. And this was a bit different, it was a bit too, a bit closer to my roots, it was, you know, actual redstone, rather than like a crazy invention. But anyway guys, I hope you liked it. See you later.